in, in making a lot of proofs, we make these different assumptions, and sometimes it's just assumed that everybody understands what everything means. But it, when you're dealing with mathematics, when you're dealing with statistics, assuming something is not a good idea, because there's always somebody out there, like me, who wants to know more. Like when, when I first saw the expected value of a sum, and somebody said, well, the expected value of a sum is the sum of the expected values. I'm like, oh, okay, well, why is that so? So there's these people who are always going to ask you that. So you need to be able to explain that to everybody. So let's look at the definition of an expected value. So you can think of the, the expected value uh, as like an average, a mean, or something like that. Something that's weighted, right? So it's weighted by the probability of each different value. So if we look at the definition for an, an expected value, now here I, I didn't write just a simple definition. I do it for this sum here, but really it's the expected value of a variable is the sum of that variable times the probability. This is basically across the entire sample space, right? Um, now, it doesn't have to be sum, though, okay? So this is when we're dealing with discrete variables. We sum if we're doing with, with quantitative slash continuous variables, we'll use integrals. But this is basically the, the the expectations you get the, so this could be just if it was one variable it would be x times the probability of x if it was just one variable it would be y times the probability of y then of course we don't only sum across that variable here so so let's go ahead and expand this so this is the same as the sum and it's, it's this this double sum because we're summing over x and y but we're breaking it breaking it up because we have two different variables here in the summation and we could actually expand this to any number of variables, okay? So it doesn't have to just be two. So we're going to do x times the probability, the joint probability. So this, this, this comma here means joint probability x and, and, and. Let's say and, <laughs> just make sure. And y plus with a double sum of y times the probability, joint probability of x and y so we pull out the x because now we're that we're summing over y the x is meaningless here so it's like a constant so you can pull it out of that sum so you get the sum of x times the sum of this joint probability of x and y plus the sum of y and again you'll notice that here this we're summing over y and here we're summing over x the probability of x and y so i i, I highlight that for you here so what, what i highlight here was to show you that this is a uh, we call it a marginal, it's a marginal value. So we're, we're essentially what we're doing is we're ignoring one of the variables. So here we're, we're summing across x, the probabilities across x. So like here's a little table that I made up that shows like a variable y and a variable x. So x has two different values a and b and y has two different values a and b. If I'm summing across x, I'm just adding these two sums to get the final. So I'm ignoring the fact that that the data can also be divided into this by this y variable into the a and b, right? And if I'm so that's here in this case, I'm summing across x. So in that case, this is going to give me the probability of y. So the y variable is a and b. I'm ignoring the fact that that this this um this sum can be divided into divided by the variable x, right? So I'm just summing across. If I'm summing across the x, I'll get the probability of y. I'm summing across the y, I'll get the probability of x. So this is just this is some marginal probability issue here. So we can ignore, in this case, we could ignore the probability of y. And that's what I do here, right? So I just rewrite, let me see if I can fit this all on the screen. So I rewrite this, this equation here to the sum of x of x times the probability of x. Again, this is because we were using these marginal probabilities plus the sum of y times the probability of y. And as I mentioned before, the definition of an expected value is the sum for a discrete variable, sum of x times the probability of x, right? So the sum of the variable times its probability. In this case, it's this is this probability is known as a probability mass function because we're dealing with the discrete variable. If we're dealing with a continuous variable, in addition to this being an integral instead of a summation sign, this would be a probability density function, but here we're dealing with a probability mass function because we're dealing with discrete variables. So this is the expected value of x, definition of the expected value of x, and this is the definition of the expected value of y, and that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted to show that the expected value of a sum is the sum of an expected value. Thank you. Bye.